Welcome to Euphoria, a podcast where we look back on the great glam and garish of Eurovision past. My name's Isabel Chilman and I'm joined, as ever, by a man who always makes sure to say his hard rock hallelujahs every morning, bedtime and before each meal, <laughs> it's Roland Bodnow. Hallelujah indeed, it's me. <laughs> Hello Isabel, how are you doing? Good, thanks mate, how are you? I'm very good, thank you, doing good, all smiles here. Oh lovely stuff everything's right with the well it's not i was gonna say everything's right with the world no Wrong. it's been a horrible weekend Wrong. actually yeah. um, globally i'm done things i'm doing okay though so good that's well i'm glad you are selfish what? lovely <laughs> <laughs> um, um yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're terrible at starting this, uh, aren't we? <laughs> what do we do what's the next bit <clears throat> we do wine oh okay yeah i fucked up on that oh so i just <laughs> just like just like grabbed one that was lying around. That's fine. Yeah. So <laughs> it's um, A, nothing interesting. No, just a... Australian Merlot. Fine, we haven't had an Australian before, I don't No, think. and unfortunately they are part of the Eurovision. <laughs> so Time we there not. we go. Rather not talk about it. Uh, and also... Screw top. Screw top. It was going to happen at some point. I've done it twice, maybe three times now. So... Uh, Oh, it says this goes well with spicy pasta dishes. Did you did you bring a spicy pasta dish? No. No. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, maybe next time. <laughs> um, mm. I feel like a spicy pasta dish isn't the well, right. Well, you should sort still dish click it open. Shall, Shall I, do I that? tell you something fun that happened? You I, were there, I but know almost there. Fun. Let me. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Go on. What happened? I went to an Abba night. Yeah, you did. On Saturday uh, in Hackney. And I met Roland after all for, afterwards for a little dance because he was at a birthday party. That was. Um, yeah, it was good. Like, you, the Abba was good. And you looked fabulous. There is I a, looked I incredible. saw the tweet you put out from our little uh, um, our, our Twitter account. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was quite something. My lovely jumpsuit. <laughs> in pink, I had I on um, see-through boots that had silver stars on them and yep. had a moon-shaped handbag as well. <laughs> So uh, astrologically themed. Very much yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked fantastic. Yeah, it was just a bit, for what should have been one of the gayest nights of the year. Yeah. Too straight. Well, you guys, you guys, I feel... Um, we gayed it up. Yeah, yeah. But you, there was, the, the rest of the audience there was mostly wannabe 70s hipsters rather oh, than... God. Absolute queens. So everyone was a bit shovey as they quite what? often are on a straight night. Were they moshing? No, they're just rude. Oh, right, okay. So, just very shovey. We got a lot of drinks spilt on us. Jesus. We had fun dancing to the music, but oh, I don't know if I'd go to it again. No, oh, okay. Well, you, you, I feel like you guys made it what it was, and you looked fab. I saw you before. You looked fabulous. I saw you afterwards. Looked sweaty. <laughs> you looked slightly more disheveled, but still yeah, fabulous. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've seen photos of me from later on in the evening. I think the fabulousness trailed off <laughs> and just became sweat. We all became. It was the them. hottest room in the world. The- so, you were in there for two minutes, yeah. and you had sweat genuinely Oof. pouring off your face. Went outside to get some air, cooled down, went back in, sweat, sweat. immediately, done. Sweat. Yeah, just yeah, done. yeah. Yeah. Moth club, switch uh, up your aircon, mate. Yeah. Or it's don't go hot. there if you're a particularly sweaty person. Which I am, as we all <laughs> know. Go on, Here click it go. open. Let's do it. Ooh. Uh, I'm know. so sorry, that was so disappointing. <laughs> Here, let's I've had it. a long day at work, guys. All right. Mm. Oh, 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 did you spill on your crotch? No, I didn't. There was a drop <laughs> on the table. I just missed. That could have been the first. The first wine disaster of oh, Euphoria. Here you go. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Hey. Happy weekend. I didn't. I do. Do you have any news? The next bit. New. Oh yeah. Do you? Mm, did it, did it, did it. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> I get so excited. Eurovision <laughs> <laughs> news. Yeah, a quick one. Yeah, um, I it, it, it was more a uh, disappointment than anything else that I saw. Um, and I, I tweeted, oh, I tweeted yeah. it from our account. Um, Conchita Verse had to cancel her Edinburgh performance oh. after band members were denied uh, visas. Gutted. Um, she had a, she has a Syrian ensemble, which I think sounds amazing. Oh. Um, they're based in Vienna, um, but she was coming over for the Edinburgh International Festival, and uh, her some of her band members were denied visas, and so she had to. 
cancel the show. Oh, gutted, um, mate. I know. Let him in. I'd I love to know. see you can shoot up in Edinburgh. I'm going up next week. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, inevitably, it'll be for a stupid reason, right? Well, that's the Tories for you. <laughs> don't let any strangers in. Don't like them, foreigners. Anyone who looks different. No. Eh. Um. <laughs> that was mine and Roland's impression of Boris Johnson and Theresa May. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so that's, that's a bit of... It's, I mean, it's Eurovision related. I thought it was worth pointing out. Paul Conchita. Well, we offer a statement of support yeah. behind you as well. Yes, we do. Love you, babes. <laughs> All right. Uh, I haven't got anything for that. No, that's fine. That's Good. our little bit of right. news. We are still... We've got some... Um, any other business, though? Oh, fun. Got a couple of bits. Mm. Um, starting with Isabella Rowland. Aiden from North America again. Hey, Aiden hey, from Aiden. North America. Uh, I very much enjoyed this week's episode. Last week's episode. Yeah. Uh, I see why Monsieur Nerf would grow tired by the end of that debacle. <laughs> Oh, I haven't Monsignor checked if Monsignor Neff's still alive. I don't know. I've said it about a hundred times this week. Just oh, on my own nerve. sometimes and I'm potting around the house. It Monsignor Neff! Like if something goes wrong yeah. and I forget to do something, Monsignor. like I open the fridge and remember, oh, you didn't buy any avocados, Isabel. Monsignor Neff! <laughs> I can it. see it's something like you're going to say into old age and like your kids are going to be like, why did you fucking say that? Oh, <laughs> Monsignor Neff, I forgot to buy wine. <laughs> Quick, someone go out. Oh, yeah. It is very, it's very sad. Satisfied. It's like Zuta Law or mm. like Nerd. Nerd. Mons your nerve. Mons your nerve. Love it. Uh, also, Roland's song this episode was not given nearly enough credit. Mm. It, and then, but then writes, it deserved at least a six. I mean, that's not. It's not that What do you give credit. it a four? Yeah. <laughs> that's like too much points. No. Well, anyway. Well, fine. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate those two extra points. <laughs> uh, that being said, I tend not to be negative or critical of anything ever, especially things uh, Eurovision related. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. It's sort of like the opposite of you. <laughs> Aiden, are you my exact mirror opposite? <laughs> ah. Oh, interesting. Um, that's me, Aiden. Aiden also bits PS. Isabella stole my favourite. Oh, fuck. Yay! Well, it's fair enough. I mean, I, I don't feel like I did anything in particular on the last week's episode to win people over. I mean, I was oh, just... Oh, ever. My, <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is a very neggy episode, isn't it? <laughs> I've had a long day. Uh, <laughs> I'm still tired from the weekend. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. If my voice uh, cracks halfway through this, I think I'm still I'm still recovering. Yeah, you can always tell when Roland's hung over because his voice I is have, croaky. Yeah, I get a croaky voice. Didn't, always. Didn't help with the song this week, but we'll see how that Ooh, goes. Oh, <laughs> sexy. Wow. Well, okay. Yeah. Um, we've also had another email from lovely Chance, the oh. maybe rapper, uh, with the subject line, I too... I'm walking here. Hey, he's walking there. <laughs> in, in Brooklyn. Chance from Brooklyn. <laughs> Chance from Brooklyn. Hey. Um, Chance says, Dear Euphoria Overlords. We're having that. Oh, wow. Okay. We're that. All right. Very happy. We, uh, yeah, stepped up. Uh, from now on, every we are email, the please. Overlords. <laughs> we are the Euphoria Overlords. I think we might go power crazy. <laughs> I already have many yeah, years ago yeah, yeah, aged yeah. about six we've got a podcast uh, <laughs> as soon as i realized i had a voice i yeah, think i was yeah. a bit power crazy um another banger of an episode thanks i hope we can all find the monsieur nerf inside of ourselves oh, i feel like we started something right <laughs> monsieur nerf monsieur nerf just start saying it we'll spread it around the world <laughs> hashtag monsieur it's nerf. like a mixture but that's the thing it's a mixture of the the wor- the you can say it as an exclamation of worry. Yeah, like you are saying it about you know cl- you know trying to find Monsieur Nerf. Monsieur Nerf, we yeah. need your help, Monsieur Nerf. But then, as as Chancellor said, w- you can be Monsieur yeah. Nerf like, and be the powerful winner yeah. that glides on through the calm in the storm, in the roller skates and wins at the end <laughs> and sings "I Did It My Way." Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> so you're either looking. Maybe that's the two types of people. You're either looking for Monsieur Nerf or you are Monsieur Nerf. Be the Monsieur Nerf you you want the world you want to be. The world to see you as. <laughs> Uh, uh, Roland, I hope you enjoyed your trip to my lovely city. I did. And I'm not at all offended you chose not to look me up or give me the chance to buy you chance. Chance. Eh? Oh, I bet you use that all the time. <laughs> to buy you an improper pint. Ooh. Ooh. They do Ooh. have improper, they're weirdly weirdly measured pints. They're... Oh, I thought that meant sexy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like a hand job or something. <laughs> yeah. 
I thought I just meant like a flirty bite. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Improper. Oh, yeah. Improper. Sorry. I don't know. Not, sorry. I said hand job. <laughs> hand job. Oh, sorry, Chance. Gross. Sorry, Chance. We're adults. Uh, sorry, Chance. Disgusting. <laughs> um, additionally, your New York accent wasn't at all nice. Oh, come on. It was. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go back and start. He said he's heard I'm a much New Yorker. worse. Hey, I'm a New Yorker. No, that was that was <laughs> definitely right. Italian that racist. Was like that was terrible. <laughs> Plus, you need to ham up your accent next time you're over there. Yeah, English what do you like proper better. English? Very English. Hello, Be Hugh Grant. Oh, gosh, um, sorry. Um, uh, 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 gosh, that's my Hugh Grant. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Plus, I found actually, and similar Yorkshire friends have found mm. actually not doing a very English English accent, but actually going for like. Pure yeah, pure Yorkshire. Oh yeah, they love it. Do they? Because they don't know what it is. Yeah. So they're really confused. Oh, interesting. They find it a bit exotic. Um. <laughs> also from Chance, Isabel, you're fabulous. <laughs> just that. Just that. It says that. <laughs> Continue what you're doing. Oh. Thanks, Chance. Jesus Christ, Isabel. I don't know. You're fabulous. I don't know what it is you do to our listeners, Isabel. <laughs> Mate, uh, come on. I mean, so I, I mean, maybe you've toned down the screeching. Maybe that you had there was quite a lot of screeching in earlier episodes. It was quite screechy. <laughs> um, still can be. I think oh, you yeah. just twiddle your knobs back. No, I do. I'm slightly faster on the knobs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and then Chance signs off in a wonderful uh, Conchita, oh. back to Conchita, Conchita S yeah. way. From the fading light I fly, oh. Chance from Brooklyn. Chance sound. I should have gone for a pint with Chad Cheeky. Uh, what was it called? Improper pint. Imp- improper pint. Mm. Chance sounds like. I'd love an improper pint with anyone right now. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> oh, blimey. I just. It would, like a an nice improper pint. pint. Like yeah. a nice, like, sexy pint. Oh, like I Like a flirty see. pint. Yeah, someone take you for a pint, have a flirt. Like, they'll take you for a drink, <clears throat> but they've got Othering, saucy things on their minds. Not that you'd be up for it. But no, but it's good to know. You might, like, touch hands. It's good to know someone wants physical contact with you. <laughs> it's good to know that, isn't it? <laughs> it is nice. Sometimes. So someone somewhere. Might be interested one day. Sometimes you do one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's quite good at the moment. Well, what were you about to say? I mean, <laughs> are you doing all right? No, absolutely okay. not. Um, and this is bad to say for any of my friends that have recently gone through breakups, but I'm one of them. Um, it's that actually a lot of us are single at the moment. Yeah. And at the, currently, this is the most number of single friends I've ever had. You, and I'm quite happy. You timed it well. Despite sadness on on, on parts, obviously everyone's yeah. parts from time Everyone, to time for yeah. various reasons. Yeah. Got a good gang right now. Yeah. Oh, it's all positive, positive as well. Little army. Support each other. Plus, break up now, at least it means you're not getting divorced in 10 years time. <laughs> That's a good thing too. Good and point. you get the end of the summer to be free and single and then Lovely. find someone to... Do you have to buy a Christmas present? Well, I was going to say find someone to cuddle down with in the winter, but maybe you're that fresh that you don't buy them. No, fuck them. We'll all go away for Christmas. Yeah. Great. Yeah, easy. Done. Sod him. Yeah. Yeah. Single's fine. How do we get onto this? We're all right. <laughs> Jesus. Right. Uh, <laughs> that's, all, that's all my business. Have you got any business? Um, not really. I think we're sort of good, aren't we? Oh, I'm going to shout out a bit of any other business. It's nothing to do with Eurovision. But if you live in London... Oh, yeah. We're putting on a screening. We're putting on a screening. There's an amazing um, people-powered cinema thing called Our Screen, where you choose a film and choose a cinema, and you can put on whatever film you want. It's incredible. And one of my favourite films is a film called Troll 2, which is one of the worst films ever made, but it's hilarious. And we're putting it on at Genesis Cinema in Mile End on the 24th, Sunday the 24th of September. So if you live in and around London and you love terrible movies, check it out. Just type in Troll 2 Genesis Cinema and you'll be able to find it on Google. But absolutely come along. It's going to be an absolute right. Me and Roland are going to be there. It'll be a real hoot. Yeah. And it'll be nice to meet some fans. Yeah, yeah, it will be. Yeah. Yeah, Come along. Um, Yeah, that'll be really good. If you do want to get in touch with us as well, I just say professional. You can email us euphoriapodcast at gmail.com or. Oh, you can uh, get in touch with us on Twitter at EuphoriaCast. And just, there's cats on there. There's, uh, there's me being sweaty, dancing yeah, to Waterloo. Looking fabulous, though. Uh, there's all sorts. We, we talk about a fair amount of stuff on there. So get in touch with us on Twitter or on uh email and uh there's definitely a couple of songs being made if you want to make a song and send it to us yes send us a song for the bloody competition we'll yeah. talk about it later on in the show yeah because oh, there's a slight change with the prizes oh yeah we'll talk about that later we'll talk about that later then. um but yeah do it good do, do it. it do it <laughs> right 
Story. Do you want a story? Let's do, do a story. A story. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited about this. To. Right. Roland. Yeah. Let me take you back to mm. Holland mm. in 1933, wow. where a bouncing baby girl named Marion Henriette Louise Molly was born on the 29th of December. Lovely. My Tw- middle name's Henrietta. 29th of December. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Nothing. It's just like all the <laughs> time for a bird. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it sound like <laughs> it was I'd like February. Thirty first of February or something. <laughs> no, I think like, that's what? just an inappropriate time to have a baby. Inappropriate. Yeah, it's between Christmas and New well, Year. It's annoying. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's not a, oh, my future sister in law's birthday is on Boxing Day. It's a bloody oh, nightmare. No, Rebecca, change double, that. Double presents. Change that. Or she gets single awkward. presents, so that's yeah, fine. Exactly. <laughs> saves money. Good. Happy babies on Christmas Day. Yeah, it saves money. Won't get them all. Yeah. yeah Presents yeah. cancel each other out. They don't get anything. Yeah. That's what happened to Jesus. That's what's going to happen to you. <laughs> so, of, of Sur... Su- I can't, oh God, I can't say this. Of Surinamese origin, mm. her father was a Navy man stationed in the city of Den Helder. And her mother was one of the first black women to settle in the area. Good, good for her. I was the only dark child in kindergarten and was ignored. Oh. Marry instead of her childhood. Oh. But she had a very supportive family and close unit around her. You're a brown child, but you can achieve anything you want, they told her. <sighs> That's a really nice thing to hear in today <laughs> in today's like <laughs> situation. Mm. It's nice to hear got that. The Nazis back. Things have kind of changed since <laughs> it's mm. it's it's a weird situation where you go, oh, things were better in the 30s. <laughs> yes, things were better for black people in, <laughs> in, the 30s. in, in Holland in the 30s yeah. than they are in America in 2017 yeah. right now. Fan-fucking-tastic. Great. Good. Good. Um, but at the outbreak of World War II, her life was changed. Her father's ship was bombed, burning him badly. <sighs> At this point, age nine, Marion and her family moved to Amsterdam, where the Germans forced Navy personnel to sign up, transferring them to Germany and placing her father in further danger from which he never returned. Jesus Christ. Okay, we've gone heavy. We've gone heavy early. Yeah, it's like one of my episodes. Sounds right. No, it's okay. I'm going to lean into it. <laughs> It'll get better. Okay, let's hope so. Marion liked to play the piano for her father, and this talent continued after his death receiving uh with her receiving a scholarship to a dutch conservatory very nice she did eventually leave though citing racism from within the institution as her reason but continued to play and sing jazz and boogie woogie good for her for standing up to that shit like a bit of boogie woogie yeah and doing boogie woogie yeah love it (laughs) so age 19 she was discovered by noted dutch entertainer tune hermans his name is hang on his name is tune tune Toon. Toon. T-U-N. T-O-O-N. Toon. Good name. Toon. <laughs> yes. Toon. Uh, he wanted to make her a star. Excellent. My mother was opposed to using my own last name, though. So I chose the stage name of Millie Scott. Okay. That sounds like a pretty modern name. What? The, this was like the 50s? No. <laughs> maths. Yes. About maths. Uh, Early 50s. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Millie Scott. Millie Scott. Nice. My discovery by Toon for the big stage was the start of more than a 50-year career. Wow, strong. Good work. Strong. Even in any industry, 50 years on the job is pretty good, right? Just being alive for 50 years <laughs> amazes me. Yeah, that's that's a good target to have. Just high five yourself for that. I mean, we might, we might only have 50 a... plus and listening, give yourself a pat on the back, mate. <laughs> Done. Good, uh, good work for just downloading this podcast. I feel like I've tried to get my mum to download a podcast for years, and she struggles. Ageist. Oh come on. Ageist. All right. Well, fine. Oh, so that was mummist. She has. My, I love Alison. Pod- she does listen to this podcast quite a lot. Hi, Alison. My gra- I went to see my grandma uh, a couple of weeks ago. She's ninety and blind. Um, and she, uh, mostly blind. And she was looking at my. F- I was fanning around on my phone because I was trying to look at the next bus times to get out of there because no, I needed to work out there, there was one an hour and I had to work out when they were I love her dearly um, and she was going oh do you let me have a look at that like how do you work this thing how does it how does it work with my iPhone and I was saying to her you know you have all these applications on it and you can click yeah. on them for whatever things yeah. I've got my, my emails on there and I can take loads of photos I've got hundreds of photos on there and I've got podcasts like you're, you know you're talking books and everything yeah. and explaining it all to her she loved it I, she, she was really frustrated that her basically her eyesight went a long time ago, <sighs> and she was mainly really annoyed that 
she didn't have access to an iPhone or to a tablet or to you know a smartphone yeah. of some or some context yeah. before her eyesight went. Because yeah. actually, if she'd have got used to one before her eyesight went, she she'd loved it. Yeah, yeah. Had yeah. Skype. She could have yeah. listened to loads of because she listens to e book audio Yeah. So yeah, she could yeah. have just had to listen to loads of podcasts all the time. But her eyesight's <coughs> too bad now. She can't be able to deal with one. Get her an Alexa. An Alexa. You just talk. You just talk at it. <gasps> It's not a bad shout. You can just say, play this podcast. Oh my God, that's a great idea. Really oh my God, idea. that's a great idea. 50 quid. No, this podcast isn't paid for. We've gone off topic. Sorry. Sorry. Back to the story, but that's amazing. So, uh, back to Millie. Yes, yeah, sorry. Lou Van Roos, the agent of stars such as Ella Fitzgerald and Peggy Lee, began working with Marion, now Millie, yeah. and increased her audience further. Placing her on the stage with Judy Garland Fuck. and introducing her to Quincy Jones. Wow! So she's like with the with the like the big wigs, the like, the oh, with some cool cats. Yeah, the cool cool cats. After building up a career as a successful jazz singer, Millie landed her first TV show, Scott in the Roos. Scott in the house. No. Scott in the Roses, as far as I can wow, work out. Wow, that's a very which is, um, dated name. <laughs> I don't really get Hi, it, mate. I'm Scott, and welcome to Scott in the Roses. But it's her show. Okay, fair enough. Oh, wait, no, because her surname's Millie Scott. Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> Sorry, had Scott. a bit of a, a bit of a <laughs> moment then. So she got her first TV show. Uh, this was in 1965, and she had dancers and an orchestra and wow. celebrity musical guests. So she was doing good. Yeah. She was doing great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TV in the 60s was fucking weird and cool. Yeah, so. but you could just kind of do what you want, right? Hell like, yeah. she, she was a singer and she just had a show. Uh, as a result, in 1966, uh, after the success of her show, she was given the chance to take part in the Dutch Eurovision selection. Amazing. Ace. So As she, we said, pinnacle of anyone's career. Well, that's the crazy thing is that she, I mean, maybe it's the English perspective, but there's someone who was like working with Quincy Jones and like had a TV show and had all these guests and everything like that was like, you've earned the right to do Eurovision. And yeah. that's like a big thing. Whereas here it's like, you came you, you, third, mm, third, fourth on the X Factor. Oh, and you, you got kicked off your record label a couple of years ago. Yeah. Do you want to do Eurovision? <clears throat> Will we'll you do, do Eurovision, Eurovision for us? Will you do, I'll we'll be do great Eurovision. if you did. I'll be great if you do did. Do you want to Eurovision reunite your band that broke up 10 years ago and do Eurovision? Yeah. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you, we really need, we need to make up numbers, guys. It's if you could really. Someone. You could get them back together to do Eurovision. That it's really either great. you or Daz again. Yeah, never Daz. <laughs> we never want Daz. That's the threat they make everyone. It'll be Daz. Don't make us do Daz. <laughs> we will don't make us do that <laughs> um so yes she was um offered you everything amazing although i preferred to sing jazz and had already performed with many trios and bands i thought i've got to go with this yeah <laughs> i love that thought what i do your vision well i've got to go with this i've got to go with this <laughs> At the duck, se- the duck selection. At the duck selection, <laughs> selection she ducks. chose the right duck, and it <laughs> she, would in the duck race. <laughs> she turned the duck upside down and went, "You're going to Eurovision." <laughs> Yay! That's the English way to choose the Eurovision entry: a proper duck race through the winding lakes of Yorkshire. Love it. <laughs> That'd be great. At the Dutch selection, you got it. Her song, Fernando. And Filippo was a clear winner. Fernando and Philippe. Yeah. Cool. And Millie went forward to the 11th Eurovision Song Contest held wow. in Luxembourg City on the 5th of March. Did I seriously think of winning? No, I did not. Come on. It scared me stupid. Come on. Millie said. Millie, have some confidence in yourself. Mm-mm-mm. Dream big. I'm terrified. You went with Quincy. Quincy Jones. Quincy, Quincy Jones, man. <laughs> he's, the, he's the man. He's the guy, he's man. The he's the fella guy. Uh, the song Fernando and Filippo tells the story of the title characters. Fernando is a guitarist from Santiago mm-hmm. who's in love with a girl in mm-hmm. San Antonio whom he drives to see every evening. Amazing. I don't know how far these places are apart. I hope it's like, like 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Just around the corner, mate. Yeah. I mean, it'd be yeah. it'd be too much to go for like longer than an hour. Don't bother. Oh, no. No. So Every no. evening. Fernando, give up. But my bus journey's enough. Then oh. you got to get in your car and drive an hour. That's why in London, you don't date anyone that lives 
like an hour away from you. Uh, well, basically outside of your neighbourhood because it takes an hour to get anywhere. Exactly, you commute to work anyway. I'm yeah. not travelling. I travel 45 minutes a day each <laughs> way to go into work. I'm not going to travel I'm to meet I'm not going you. any extra yeah. to meet a guy. Yeah, no, they're not worth it. Um, the song is memorable as featuring the first nonsense refrain mm. in Dutch Eurovision history. You love a nonsense I refrain. I love a bit of nonsense, mate. <laughs> a series of nonsensical syllables appearing at the beginning and end of the lyrics, usually transcribed as tonky tonky ki kong kong kong. So you can have a little listen to Millie singing the beginning nonsense and into the first dance. There we go. Oh, well, Ellie. Oh, that was very jolly. Very, very merry. Fun. Very happy. Very fun. She's having a great time. Couple She's gorgeous. Of... Yeah, she onto is. the stage. Yeah, really. Doing her reeky deekies. Couple of guys in sombreros on stage. Not sure what relevance that has to the Dutch, but go no, for it. that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, some Spanish guitars. Lovely. Good work. Um, so Fernando and Filippo ended the evening. So wait, who's Filippo in all this? The uh, lover. Oh, so Filippo's a woman. Must be. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, I say must be. Well, maybe. How heteronormative <laughs> of me. <laughs> um, presuming the search. I thought Filippo was a... a... Yeah, because it says it's a girl. Yeah, okay, cool. It's a lady friend. Although there's two blokes on stage and, and she's, she's pointing, pointing at, at either both. of them. Maybe it's another one of them subversive ones, although mm. not very subversive when there's two guys and she points... At Fernando and then Male points at Mexican Felipe. Male Mexican lovers. Well, sounds like a sequel to Brokeback Mountain. Great! <laughs> Fernando and Felipe. Um, so the song, unfortunately, ended the night with only deux points. Ooh, tough. Receiving votes only from the UK and Ireland. Well, I feel like we had good taste back then. Hell fucking yeah. Back then. Not now. Not now. <laughs> Continuing a run of poor Dutch results dating back to 1960. Wow, okay, okay. Although Fernando and Filippo was something of a novelty song and was performed as such, yeah. at a time when ballads dominated Eurovision, Millie Scott would subsequently claim, controversially, that her disappointing result was um, at least partly attributed to racism on the part of the voting jurors. Interesting. Because this wasn't public vote back then. No, this was just jury jurors. votes. Yeah. Just juries. Um, a very big deal, obviously, was made at the time of um, Millie being the first black woman to sing at the Eurovision Song Contest. Yes. But Millie did not care for the attention. I was colourful. So what, Millie said. It didn't help me win. In the Netherlands, I had won the undisputed first prize. People didn't realise I was the first black singer who took part in the contest. The Netherlands was reasonably accustomed to people of colour, but many other countries outside Holland, absolutely not. The exceptions were Britain and Ireland, and from each of them, I got one point. From the rest, I got zeros. I was crushed. This was definitely my first real encounter with discrimination. Wow. So Minnie genuinely then and now still feels very strongly that she did as badly as she did um, because of the colour of her skin. And I'm I'm absolutely sure that in 1965, there absolutely would have been very racist people out there who wouldn't have voted her uh, for her because she was black. Uh, yep. And this would have played some sort of a role in, in her place in the contest. But she didn't come last. <laughs> France, Monaco and Italy did worse than her. Wow, okay. Gaining either one or no points at all. So that's saying something. If she came, but... if she came bottom, I would, I'd be, I'd be backing her. Yeah. More with this. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Everyone, not everyone was fully racist. No. <laughs> just Do you a, know what I mean? Just they might. Some of them were def- a, pro- a proportion, a proportion of racism. Were, there was some racism involved, <laughs> but not everyone was racist. No, no. And the three countries did worse. Yeah, I feel like it sort of goes without saying though that at that point in life, if you put someone who is is black or or a different sort of uh, ethnic diversity or ethnic background, there's going to be some people. So put put them on a stage. There's going to be some people who are yeah uh, yeah even now 
who are racist who try and put them down or try and yeah. stop that from happening i was i was equally surprised when you said this is her first real sense of discrimination because she also said that she was ignored in kindergarten mm. whether that whether she just said that's just because i was a child who was ignored mm. n- nothing to do with her race but um yeah it seems maybe it seems maybe it's because that's just sort of a given um that year's winner udo jurgens found disappointed millie sat outside on a bench oh sat down with her and millie. said you're a very good artist which she said helped heal the wound of losing good but the disappointment of eurovision didn't kill her career although she was never a maker of hit records uh, millie's jazz-based singing career took her to england germany and sweden in later years Excellent. meeting tina and ike turner wow. and Jimi hendrix wow. whilst on the travels whilst well, he was in london probably having a great time amazing great time. Yeah, that's good she later branched out into acting and appeared in many stage and television shows. Her best known role being in the 1990s uh, television prison drama, Apologies Again, Holland. Vwoen of Lugel. Lugel, yeah. yeah. In which she played Baby Miller, a woman trying to come to terms with her racial identity. Wow. Lovely. Cool. I'm gonna give that a watch. Yeah. Including continuing to sing and play jazz. Millie also became a qualified hypnotherapist in her later years <laughs> and went on to work in her own practice. Amazing. Wow. Good so tough, like hypnotizing people, singing. I mean, you sing to them whilst you're hypnotizing them. Why not? Some like nice Just lullabies. Just keep learning skills, guys. That's yeah. the metaphor. That's the, that's the motto of this tale. Yeah. On her website, Millie says, I try to skip over the personal misery I've had in my life. Through these experiences and consciousness changes, Integrations to health and vitality, inner peace and happiness have made me a strong person. I look forward to what I'm going to experience and do. This was this was written a few years ago, but the end line on this on her bio says in capital letters, life begins at 80. Oh. Isn't that nice? That's fucking great. Isn't that nice? It's good to know. It's the worst website in the world. I have a play around in it. It was like made she, in 1995. She it's made great. it herself. Never updated. No. It's incredible. I've had wow. to translate it, so that's why it sounds a bit weird. Yeah. But um, it's great. Life begins at 80. Life begins at 80. We've got a long time to wait till life begins then. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's already stressful. It's fucking Do I have to some... slog my guts out <laughs> for the next... 80 years. 50 years. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Nice. Oh, well. Mm. Oh. Um, do you want to know two rather well one rather shocking thing one stat and one rather shocking thing i would love to know that so the netherlands uh, have had the highest number of black singers who have entered the contest of all nations in eurovision that is interesting when you look through um what is I was that number scrolling through so i haven't i haven't sort of i don't know <laughs> i've totted up all the black people in eurovision <laughs> but in 2000 and it was something i can yeah they had like seven in 2010 and they've they, they but no one's beaten them no. i haven't added them up since then cool um but somewhat shockingly the UK's first black singer... I think I know who you're going to say. <laughs> ...was in 1998. Oh, okay. It's not who I thought, but still. With Imani. That's it's the 43rd contest. That, 43rd edition of the contest. That's taken a while. That's disgraceful. And also, since then, we've had Andy Abrahams, Jade Ewan. Yeah. Ooh, anyone else? Not that I can think of. Uh, no. I, oh, Simon from Blue. Simon oh, from Simon Blue. Oh, Simon from Blue is part of a group. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, apologies but it took us until 1998. 1998. Yeah. If France was 1990, and if France had been in since the start as well, I, oh, and we were until <laughs> 1998. Yeah, I'm sure there's some countries that haven't had any black singers at all. I'm sure there's fucking plenty. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's the it majority is, I mean, of them. I mean, to, you know, we never like to criticise Eurovision. Well, we do. We fuck, we do. Uh, oh, but it, it is quite uh, ethnically undiverse, isn't oh, it? Oh, hugely. That's the thing. You know, it was mentioned this year in regards to the Ukraine, mostly to do with the... Um, oh, because, yeah. because the tagline was celebrate diversity and the three presenters were all fucking white men. Yeah. But um, also because predominantly the musicians involved... White. Everyone's yeah. white. Let's become more ethnically and sexually diverse, guys, mm. in every sense. Let's show those fucking in. Nazis over in America what we're made of. Fuck the Nazis. That's, not, that's not hard to say, is it? 
took Trump two days to say it. Took him three, actually. Three fucking days to say three. it. There was a great tweet I saw about some guy that was like, Trump tweeted me uh, within 15 minutes of me criticizing his, t- his TV show. <laughs> took him three, na- three days to criticize the Nazis. <sighs> It's not like you don't see it. It's not like you don't know what's going on. No, he knows what's going on. He's on Twitter more often than he's in the Oval Office. Did he, did he accidentally retweet someone calling him a fascist today? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's those fat thumbs. Almighty. He, I mean, how what a world. he hasn't been impeached yet. Uh, God. Jesus Christ. Anyway, okay. uh, happier days. Um, so... I mean, that's it. That was a, that was the story so of she, the Eurovision's first ever black singer. Great. She looked great, by the way. She looks phenomenal. She looks I'd great. I'd absolutely recommend checking her out as well. I think there's a couple of Millie, Millie Scott singers. So look for Millie Scott Dutch singer. Yeah. Um, but she's a phenomenal singer. Absolutely gorgeous. Wore super fun outfits on stage. So I'd highly recommend giving her a Google. Yeah, give her a Google. Give her a Google. <laughs> Two thumbs up from Isabel. Give her a Google. <laughs> I like that story. That's really nice. Thanks, mate. So we've done... Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Got a full small air. No. <laughs> no, we're fine. We've gone over the uh, 45 minutes. Good. Uh, okay. Time right. to, we'll just stop. Should we do a song? <laughs> uh, yes. Let's do one yeah, let's song. do a song. Uh, I think I was just put it... No, I wasn't. I wasn't putting it off. Why? Is it shit? No, no, no. It's not shit. It's never shit. It's never shit. It's never shit. We've had a lot of love for um, Urania the Business song. Let's get down to business. Have we? Yeah. Oh, in, 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 like from real in people world. in real life. In, yeah, the yeah. Real, in the real wide world. That's good, actually. Ellen texts me. Shall I read it out? Yeah. Ellen! My mate Ellen, who you know. Yeah. Absolute raging badass. Yeah. Um, booked a holiday <laughs> on Friday night to go to Lake Como in Italy on Sunday morning for four days. Glorious. Just having a great time in yeah, the sunshine. absolutely. Uh, and she's since been listening to the podcast. <laughs> so text me yesterday saying, I'm lying on a sun lounger listening to your podcast. Roland's let get down, Let's Get Down to Business is incredible. <laughs> and she checks this line, spread some sheets with the crying emoji face. <laughs> Mate, it literally, that just fell out of my head. And I'm concerned <laughs> that that did, but also that that's like the fan favourite of uh, all the songs I've made. Some of them it's so, so good. It's okay. so good. Well, uh, actually, I haven't sent it out around the office, actually. It gives me a little bit of hope for this okay. next one. Because, well, let's be honest, like, from the last few weeks, I have no idea. So even like I've doubted some. In fact, I doubted. Let's get down to business. Oh. And and you were uh, you absolutely loved it. Fave song. So I've doubted some, and they've been great. I've loved some. I've been, been like awful. a one or a two. So who knows? Who the fuck knows? Okay. So this is a song. Um, there's there's not loads there's not loads to it. It's uh, about. Um, I've done a metaphor. I've done a metaphor. Oh, he's done a metaphor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he's done a metaphor all over the floor. I've done a metaphor everywhere. Um, oh. It's about like, it's a metaphor <laughs> about like being a car. What? And like running out of like fuel. Oh, no, I'm going to hate And it. it's called, <laughs> and it's called fill me up. <laughs> oh, you're a disgusting boy. <laughs> Here's a song called fill me up. Mm. Let's listen. It's been a rocky road, but now it's time for me to steer away. My engine's old, the story's told. We'll meet again some distant day. I feel run down, I'm almost out. My heart's about to run on dry. But that's when I see you up there. I asked you if you wanted a ride My heart's run out So fill me up Don't want kisses or hugs Just fill me up with your love Fill me up We'll make sparks fly Put your foot on the gas Let's see how long this can last Ooh, ah, here we go As we vibrate down this dusty road Picking up speed as you take control Gonna hustle in tight, find something to hold Don't Speak, there's nothing to say There's no love song here, no games to play Grip tied up on that steering wheel We're gonna ride till there's no feelings to feel We're flying on this highway So high I could almost fly away This drive's as good as can be With such exciting sights to see Don't stop, don't turn off the engine I feel your hands through the mending Now I'm driving, now I'm free I feel your fuel inside of me Ooh, yeah 
It's a metaphor. <laughs> it's a metaphor. You've run dry, but you're not. Ooh. You don't need. <laughs> you just need filling up. Uh. <laughs> it's why I haven't heard that noise come out. Of you. <laughs> I don't think I've heard that noise come out of you before. Uh. <laughs> That's like just just like you're tired of my disgusting. Uh. <laughs> would just... that would that get past? the rules i feel like that would get past that the i'd rules. get past the rules but no but one would like <laughs> no the melody's fun yeah that's okay like the, the middle bit the middle bit i have too many words far too many words <laughs> you're just making it hard for yourself i didn't even know what you were saying half the time i know sorry but unfortunately the bits i did know were fill me up with your love fucking vomit the other, uh... and Okay. I don't need kisses and hugs. Yeah, kisses and hugs is gross. I tried to find you nothing else gross. rhymes. Nothing else rhymes with love apart from dove and above. So, so just hugs. don't say it. Uh, so one of the lines. So I'll give you some of the lines because. Um, uh, ooh ah, here we go. As we vibrate down this dusty road, picking up speed as you take control. Uh, gonna hustle in tight, find something to hold. Um. <laughs> um, don't stop. Don't turn off the engine. I feel your hands through the mending. Uh, now I'm driving. Now I'm free. I feel your fuel inside of me. No, no, no. Stop. No, no more. No, I don't want to know anymore. Israel, doesn't, Israel can't even uh, look at me at this, at this point. I, I don't like it. I've not heard it be referred to as fuel before. Uh, <laughs> I don't like it. I've re- if there's no more podcasts after this. Yes, I think we we know why. Um, no. <laughs> I, I was so close. When I was first listening to it, I was like, you know what? It's a fun <laughs> melody and you don't like the metaphor, but it's fine. <laughs> Give him like a seven. Oh, this no, is fine. it's because I've been hammering the point home. But, oh, the longer I think about it, the le- like every time I read okay, the lyrics, do, do it the goes score. down a number. Let's do the score so, now. Let's do the score quickly. This time next week, it'll be... It's gone down substantially okay. since I thought it was seven. Isabel Chilman, fill me up. No. <laughs> Mm, no, 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 no. What score would you give the song which is entitled Fill Me Up? Out of 12. Mm, You're about to say 12. Two. Three. Yeah. Oh, we're going down, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 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 we were doing well this season, but we gross. have had a rough gross, patch gross, gross. the last few weeks. I hate it. I feel like I've been assaulted. Oh, no. D- I mean, no, no. Uh, okay, well, let's move no. on from, from that. Uh, we had a, uh, an update on the prizes, didn't we? Which prize update. So I should have a prize, but I don't have we'll a prize. We'll update next week. I'm still tired from ABBA, so <laughs> I'll give you a prize update next week. But... The new price scheme yes. is this. We have decided, because we're just going to have like a million prizes to one person that potentially could be in Australia. Yeah. And also it's not fair for other people that entered because probably we'll only get like three entries. Yep. So we're going to split the prizes. So out of how many episodes did we say there's going to be? Uh, we So five months for, so that's 20. 20 prizes. Yep. So we're going to split that yep. to say whoever comes first gets 10 yeah prizes yeah 10 prizes out of the prize those out of the prize but we're gonna pick them and make sure they're rad and they kind of match up so if you get the microphone you're also obviously going to get the justin timberlake karaoke dvd um second prize will get like six and third prize will get like four yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? So at least three of you have to send in a song. Yeah, because then you all get prizes. We in know some that sense. two are on the way. 
Probably. So we third. Yeah. Come me. on, guys. I want to get at least some prizes. Come on. He's not allowed any prizes. No, give me some prizes. I'm going to enter a song Not for that song, not you. for filming. Because people will vote for me over you. Because <laughs> they love you better. Because I'm fabulous. It's because I'm needy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you are. I've learned it never works. No. Um, yeah, so if you enter a song, like we said, if anyone enters a song, we will draw your favourite Eurovision entry and colour it in and send it to you on a postcard. Yes. Also... First place, whoever's voted the best song like, entry, yeah. you get 10 amazing Eurovision like proper prizes. proper prizes. Proper prizes. We've touched them all. Yeah. We've rubbed all over them. My cat's <laughs> touched some of them. <laughs> that duck's been played with. The Euphoria overlords. They've come from our house, a lot of They've, them. They have, most of them. Yeah. We yeah. owned them. All right. I might include a photo of me in all of them. Maybe for the next... <laughs> maybe my, my prize this week is another photo of me. This pod- but for second prize. <laughs> this that's what it is. gone to your head. <laughs> Who wouldn't want a picture of me in a cowboy hat? Sending signed photos to people as a prize. I've got them on my wall. <laughs> no, they are Not amazing. Signed. They are. I love. I love those. They're photos. my headshots from Hollywood, I, mate. I might. I might have. I might ask for some. I've got a spare on my wall. I, I might get. Some Honest to God, wall. Mexican swap meet. The photo place there in North Hollywood. It cost me about $30 to get all three sets done. And they gave me about 20 of each photo. They're incredible. So good. They're incredible. So, good. so okay. that, in fact, there you go. Got a prize then. Another signed picture of me, but for second place. This is for second place. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My prize is going to be in two weeks' time. <laughs> That's an easy win. Hell yeah. I don't have three Bluetooth karaoke microphones. I've just got no. one. Oh, well. Roland doesn't love you as much no. as I need you listeners. <laughs> Fucking hell. Who's needy now? All right, go on, wrap it up then. So, we're done. Uh, so, Roland, we're going to end the podcast now. Yes, Same we are. Same everywhere this season. Roland. Yeah. Imagine. Okay, oh, good. Okay. You're at the Euro Club. Oh, yeah. You've had blue glasses of rosé. Okay, yeah. And you're doing your best thrusts <laughs> to the sweet sounds of Ooh, just a little bit. Okay, yeah. I can. I mean, I don't need to imagine it. Mm-hmm. I just do that regularly. Often. Yeah. Polly Genova, Bulgaria's 2016 ESC sweetheart, oh. comes over and taps you on the shoulder. <laughs> Hi, Roland, she whispers. <laughs> if love was a crime, I'd happily get locked up for you. <laughs> Fancy going up to my place for a menage a trois with another Eurovision hottie. Interesting. I'm interested, Polly. <laughs> From behind her appears said hottie. No. Oh. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, it seems Polly's taste in men <laughs> isn't of the highest caliber. As it's 2006 UK middle aged bad boy, Daz Sampson. No, Daz, Polly. It's the two of us together or none of us at all, Polly sternly says. Roland, what do you do? Oh my God, Polly, I love you. <laughs> I do. I watched a video of her the other day. Polly. <laughs> Uh, give me a sec. Shit. <laughs> this is a real dilemma. <laughs> I have never known you uh, to be this to serious think about like... something so hard <laughs> in your entire life. All right, okay. An uh, imaginary <laughs> situation where you have to choose between Polly, Polly Sampson and Daz Sampson. Polly no, Sampson. Polly Sampson. Polly Genova Polly. and Daz Sampson. Polly's or no great. Polly. I love Polly. And you are genuinely lost for words. I would say, Polly, love may be a crime, but Daz was a criminal to music. <laughs> I cannot do it, Polly. Get out of here. Really? Have a fun night with Daz Sampson. Wow. And you... Come back to me when you realise what an You're awful. All right, I'll do it. Yay! I'll do it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for listening. We'll speak to you next week. Sorry, Polly. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.